In this video, I'll show you how to build this simple walking robot with a single DC motor. The only tools you'll need are scissors and a hot glue gun. No soldering iron or drill required. You can see how the robot works in this slow motion clip. A linkage mechanism converts rotational motion of the motor's shaft to oscillating motion of the feet. The two feet move out of sync with each other, one is up while the other is down, which is what allows the robot to walk forward. To get started, cut two very short pieces of straw and glue one to each side of the motor shaft, making sure that they are on opposite sides. So while one is on the top of the shaft, the other should be on the bottom. That's what's going to ensure that one foot is on the ground while the other foot is in the air. Next, you'll want to build the legs. To do this, you'll need a wooden dowel that is a slightly smaller diameter than the straw and a popsicle stick. A note on cutting the dowel, you might have difficulty cutting all the way through it with scissors, but you can score around the perimeter with scissors and then bend it back and forth a few times to get a clean break. To attach the legs to the feet, put a blob of hot glue in the middle of the foot and then hold one of the legs vertically on the foot until the glue dries. You can then take the two smaller pieces and glue one horizontally to the top of each leg, forming a right angle. Again, hold it in place until the glue dries so you make sure the angle doesn't change. Your legs should now look like this, and they should be able to rotate freely when you place them into the straws. Make sure you didn't use too much glue, which could cause them to get stuck. Next, you'll want to build a support for the back of the robot to keep the motor parallel to the ground. You can see I've done that here with two more pieces of dowel and a piece of the popsicle stick. Now for the tricky part. For each leg, you're going to want to cut another piece of straw and either another piece of wooden dowel or something slightly skinnier like a wooden skewer that's going to have a little more wiggle room in the straw. You're going to glue the straw perpendicular to that vertical rear support and then you are going to glue the dowel or skewer perpendicular to the leg, but do not glue the dowel to the straw. That is going to allow the dowel to slide back and forth in the straw, and as we saw at the beginning of the video, that is going to keep the leg vertical as the motor shaft rotates. You can see here I've done that for both legs, again gluing a dowel or skewer perpendicular to the leg, and then gluing a piece of straw perpendicular to the rear vertical support, and threading the dowel through the straw. We are almost ready to connect power and see our robot walk, but we need to do one more thing. We want this rear support to slide smoothly on the ground, but you want your feet to have more grip or friction so they can grab the ground and pull the robot forward. So to do that, you can just add a bead of hot glue around the perimeter of each foot to give it a better grip so it doesn't slip. Next, it's time to connect power to your robot, and this part is important. You will see a lot of YouTube videos that use a 9-volt battery to power these motors, and you don't want to do that for two reasons. One, the motors are only rated up to 6 volts, so that higher voltage could actually damage the motor. And two, 9-volt batteries are really intended for low-power applications where they don't have to provide a lot of current. Motors draw a lot of current, so they are going to drain that battery very quickly. This makes something like a lithium-ion battery, which even though it has a lower voltage at 3.7 volts, a better choice because it can provide more current for a longer period of time to power this motor. So I have a little lithium battery here that I've attached a piece of double-sided foam tape to, and since my motor has pins, I can just plug the motor's wires directly into the connector from the battery without needing to solder a switch in place. And when I do that, if the motor spins in the wrong direction and the robot walks backwards, then I can just reverse the red and black wires to reverse the direction of current and the direction the motor spins. So when you're ready, you can connect both wires and watch your robot start to walk. Things might not always go perfectly on the first try, and that's okay. You might need to adjust the spacing or length of some of the linkages in your mechanism to prevent the legs from falling out or your robot from falling over. For a science project, you can try changing the dimensions, materials, or power supply of your robot to see if you can make it faster. For written instructions for this and over a thousand other science and engineering projects, check out the links in the video description or visit our website, www.sciencebuddies.org.